you actually think, by the way, of Broxa generally as a jungler? Because obviously you played him when he was in LEC, and that was the time where, I mean, last year, essentially, is the one I'm thinking of the most, where all the other... Dude, everyone I had on my talk shows would basically, if not flame him, like if they weren't in his team, they'd flame him and say, he's like, like he's a bottom four jungler in LEC, he's overrated, he does nothing, he's just got all the good soul laners and players. But what's mad, dude, is even people like Youngbok, who was his coach at the time, they would just sort of like politely flame him by just like sort of, and Blippo, they would just sort of explain what he can't do and what his problem. So they would kind of like do it in the way where you don't get in trouble, basically. What did you actually think? Like, is, do people go too harsh that way? Are you with them? What do you, where's your angle? Where do you come down? Uh, well, the time that I played against him, he had Caps on his team and uh, it was a bit imbalanced, I think. <laughs> uh, he would always pick his AFK farm junglers like carts and stuff, I think. Uh, he was always good at it. I mean, you know, I guess the good things about Broxa was he was never really that far behind to a point where you'd say it's a jungle diff, but he was never really ahead to the point where you'd say it's a jungle diff either. He was just like, kind of stale. Uh, he didn't, yeah. yeah, yeah, he didn't make that many plays, but he didn't make any grief plays either. So it's like it's kind of he's yeah. in the middle of everything. He didn't grief it, but he didn't make huge leads. But he was always useful, I guess, is the strength of Broxa. He was always kind of useful. You could, if he has like a lease in basically Leeson, he could carry a team fight if he gets a good kick, so he was known for that as well. So those are two positives about him. I think as you pl if you play against him actually as a player, like jungler versus jungler in like a team game on, on stage, it, you don't feel threatened. You're just like, okay, he's just going to jungle and I'm going to try to do something and if do, I can make something happen, that? he'll be behind. Do you respect that as a player? Because I feel like, like you know... How could any jungler respect that? Yeah, Tom? exactly. I mean, that, I, that's what I'm trying to get at here. Like, like, yeah, like, like, like uh... this way, if the other jungler is on like an invade champion and you're even just in solo queue and he never invades you when you're on like the farming jungle, you just think like, this guy's fucking shit, obviously, don't you? Like, you don't feel any, it's... any danger whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's it's I think the respect kind of falls off when he has a lead or like let's say he gets a double kill on my bot lane level two or something and you're like oh shit and then the game is st even for the next 50 minutes and he does nothing then you lose respect for him uh, I can't say that I've been in a spot where he's been ahead of me and actually like not done nothing so I can't say I've lost respect for him but obviously his playstyle is really boring and it's really he's not trying to win the game he's just trying not to lose the game kind of because uh, he probably thought like well, I have caps I have uh, so as and Whippo I have like reckless so do I need to win the game or do I just need to not lose the game? So I think that's where he kind of found his sort of play style maybe. Uh, whereas I think on TL, he has decent lanes as well. So he doesn't really need to like go for these aggressive plays. I think the only time that he's really aggressive is when he has like a lease. I think he's really good at the lease, like uh, diving sides and getting these small adventures. But when it comes to like Gragas, Cartus and Lee Sin, I feel like he's just playing to react rather than praying to be proactive. Dude, that's fans in a nutshell for you. That they would be like, Kedril, you're shit on like Broxer. And then you're like, let's have a look at Marcelo Lodena. So I've got Smitty G in the top lane and Selfie in the mid lane, and he's playing with Prime, Soaz, and fucking Gwipo and Caps. So yeah, this seems fair. Yeah, I'm just sure. Well, I time guess it was, time like, it was, uh, I had... Oh, yeah, it was... No, it wasn't. Yeah. Time. Who, that was yeah, who? It was. Yeah. Oh, no, well, who, the, who was last year? Was He was on Fnatic last year, right? Yeah, didn't you have Mickey? Yeah, but you were talking about end. Season 8 before when you had Caps, yeah, yeah. though. Yeah. Last year was when he had uh, Nemesis. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's when he had Nemesis, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And Nemesis, yeah, was, to, to be fair, I thought Nemesis was playing better compared to other mid laners. In the summer, yeah, was, yeah, last, sure. year, last year, Nemesis was good, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. All, All right. right. Not bad. All right. Um, no, yeah. no, wait. Does anyone here actually think TSM's winning that series? I, I actually think they can. I think they can, just because TL is so, like, inactive that it's like anyone can beat TL. Like, I'm so low on everyone in NA that it's like, if any team wins, like, I, I would just be like, yeah, I'll fucking take it, man. Just whatever. Like, just stop the fucking torture already. Like, I, I think yeah, the TSM think can win off mid diff. Like, I, I think they could win if, if Bjergsen, like, really pops off. Because Bjergsen's been, like, hard 1v9. Oh, he's been very good in the playoffs. Probably the best player, yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I'd say, yeah, Bjergsen's probably been the best player in the playoffs. And then, also, like, I think that Spiko will be able to help mid more than Jensen will. So, like, if they pressure mid, I don't see um, TL really being able to answer it. I guess the the thing for me is, like, the way I see it is I think that TSM is going to win topside. I think TL will hard win bot lane. I think... Jane, that's, the, tactical. that's why I personally think TL wins, mate, because the, I think it's support difference. Yeah, That's where I think the game changes, because think about it, right? Like we're saying, it's already hard enough to make like the top lane of one of your main carries. So they're trying to do it like they did in that series against Cloud9 with Broken Blade. But even then, they have to do like some kind of weird drafts to make it work. And even then, they, it's not like they stomped the series. So Impact can definitely hold up in a normal meta game at top lane. Mid lane is pretty much a push. Like, they're both really good players. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Briggs has played better in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Jensen had the better regular split. 
Jungle, they both kind of useless, but I'm with you. At least Spicker kind of does something, box and basically just waits for everyone else to win the game and then just goes like, like gets out of the fucking taxi and goes, yeah, great driving by me. I won the race again. It's like, you were the fucking, you were in the back seat. What are you talking about? It's like, yeah, but I told you to go like, give me a break. And then the bot lane, that's the problem. Listen, on paper, I agree on paper, the bot lane should be fine, but that bot lane just doesn't mean very good. Like double lift's been really up and down and he hasn't had many ups. It's more like he just had okay games yeah. and bad games. Yeah, so, and then, a better player right now. And dude, they literally sobbed out their support mid playoffs because it was going so badly. So... That Core JJ can be can just win this whole series himself in my opinion.